Hi, today I'm going to build a retro computer. It's a 386 PC and I have all the parts laid out right here. So first we're going to take a look at the motherboard. This is a 386 uh, DX40 and the processor is right here and it's actually soldered onto the board. There's also 4 megabytes of RAM on here and I would put 8 megabytes but I can't find any more 30 pin sims right now. So it's a pretty typical motherboard of the day. You have only ISA slots. You got your 16 bit ISA and one 8 bit ISA at the bottom. And it's a AT form factor. So here is the video card. It's actually a pretty low end video card. It's a Paradise VGA card and it only has 256k of RAM on it. But I know this works so we're using it. We also have our I.O. controller with the IDE port and the floppy as well as the serial and parallel ports. And this is a working card and there's nothing really special about it but it works. Here are our drives. We have a standard 3.5 inch 1.44 megabyte floppy drive. We have our hard drive right here. It's just a uh, an old 500 megabyte IDE drive. And we have a CD-ROM drive, which I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, get this working or not, but I might put this in as well. And at the bottom we have a five and a quarter inch 1.2 megabyte floppy drive. And here's our case right here. And we're going to be putting everything into this case. And I've done a lot of work trying to uh, get this clean again because there was a lot of rust in it. And I cleaned it all up. So uh, the keyboard, this is a standard AT keyboard. And over here is a power supply. It's actually an ATX power supply, but I have this adapter which will convert it to the AT plugs. And we have our floppy cable and the hard drive IDE cable. So here's the AT form factor case. I'm going to take the cover off. I actually got this uh, case from my old high school. I was in the class called Tech Navigators and at the end of the class our teacher let us take home a computer that we built on our own. So this was the computer. Okay, so here's the inside of the case. It looks like pretty much every other computer case except it's AT form factor. So you can see where the rust was inside this case. There was a lot of spots with a very uh, large buildup of rust that I had to scrape off. And there's still a little bit of rust, but I got it mostly all off. Uh, I think there was actually a rat living inside this case because when, there used to be like rat poop in here <laughs> so I guess that's where most of this rust came from. Okay the first thing I'm going to do is install the power supply and this is a Antic power supply 350 watts So I'm just going to screw this in, yeah, but I need some screws first, so wait just a moment. Okay, I grabbed the screws. I actually have many bags of screws from all the years of putting together computers. Okay, so we have our four screws. 
gonna hold the power supply in place. Line up the holes. I'll screw these in by hand just to get them in there. Okay, power supply in. Okay, so the next step is to put the motherboard in. And the way these old AT motherboards went in the case is they would use these plastic standoffs and they would slide into these slots in the case like that. So I'm going to put these into the motherboard right now. So you just put these standoffs and put them in the holes like so and do that for the rest of the holes where there are slots in the case. Alright, I switched the type of standoffs I was using because I didn't have enough of the other ones. These are a little bit different in design. They actually have threads on them so you can tighten them down. Except I don't have any uh, nuts to put on these so they're just going to be floating. And also I can't find any more standoffs that will screw into these holes so I'm basically only going to have one screw <laughs> supporting this motherboard but that's that won't be a huge problem because the motherboard's actually laying against the bottom of the case when I put it in there and the screw hole is lined up so I'm just gonna screw that one hole in so once we get our cards in there the motherboard's going to be fairly secure anyway so uh, let me put this screw in. All right. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and put the drives in now. So I'm gonna start with the hard drive. Okay, here's the hard drive, and it's going to go on the bottom here. So this hard drive is going to take the thick threaded screws. Okay, I'm going to put in two screws just for this demonstration but it should be enough to hold the hard drive in place oh I hate these old cases there's not really any way I can get to the other side without removing this motherboard tray Okay, next is the three and a half inch floppy, and I'm going to put this up top. Except I have to hold it up because there's no tabs to keep it up. And this is going to use the thin threaded screws, so I'll grab two of those. I think I can actually get in through this side, although getting the screw in there might be a bit tricky. Come on, come on. Uh. Okay, I got it in. I'm just going to pop in our cover now 
And I'm going to pop out two of them up here so I can put in the floppy drive and the CD-ROM. Okay, putting the CD-ROM in. It's a bit tight. Really tight. I think this uh, these trays are bent in a little bit. want to break the front bezel. There we go. There we go. Again, these are going to use the thin threaded screws and I'm only going to use two of them. And if you're going to just use two screws, then you want to put them diagonally and you know, not in the same position on both sides so it'll move around less. Actually, I'm going to put this in the other hole right here because this is bent out a little bit. Okay, CD-ROM in. And finally, the floppy drive. And I think these also use thin threaded screws. I'm trying to keep the front of it lined up. Apparently the screw is not tight enough or not gripping the case enough to keep it forward. So I'm going to put another screw in there. There we go. Okay, I'm going to put the cards in now. First I'm going to do the I.O. card. that in the top slot. Okay, I think that's in there good enough. Thick threaded screws to put the cards in. And here's the video card, and it's actually very long, so I'm going to put it uh, a few slots down. Right here is okay. Okay, the video card is in, and we're getting pretty close to done. Okay, I'm going to put in the IDE cable. So, I have to look for pin 1. And I think it's toward the edge of this card. I have the camera at kind of a weird angle, so this is a little bit difficult. Okay, I'm going to put the the bottom IDE plug into this hard drive. And if I remember correctly, the red stripe pretty much always goes towards the power plug. So, let me just get that in. Sorry for my arm blocking the view. Okay, that's in there. Just gotta tuck these cables out of the way. 
and I'm going to plug in the other IDE plug into the CD-ROM. Now for the floppy cable. Oh, another thing is uh, on these uh, old floppy cables, there's usually a twist in the cable right here. After the twist is your is going to be your A drive and your B drive is going to be down here so I want this one plugged into my floppy drive the three and a half inch floppy drive that is okay I'm going to plug this in into my three and a half inch floppy drive but I'm not 100% sure if this floppy drive is going to work because I'm looking at it right now and some of the pins are jacked up they're like pushed in or something but I'm going to give it a shot and if it doesn't work I'll just put a different floppy drive in there Alright, that went in pretty loose, but it's in there. Now the five and a quarter inch floppy drives have like a card edge connector right here. And you'll just use the other plug, this one, to put in there. And it only goes in one way because it's keyed. Alright, okay now I'm going to get all the power plugged in. So this is pretty simple, not much to it. Okay, all the drives are plugged in. I'm just gonna tuck in some of these cables. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, this is an ATX power supply, and it will not go into this AT motherboard. So that's why I have this adapter that I bought off eBay. And it's kind of messed up because I cut the these cables because I wanted some of the pins out of here, but they're completely unnecessary for this motherboard. So all you got to do is plug the ATX connections together and then you plug in the P8 and the P9 connectors into the AT motherboard. And when you plug these connectors into the motherboard you got to make sure that the black wires are always pointing towards the center. Alright, as you can see, the black wires are in the center. Okay, we're in. So AT power supplies actually have a power switch, and this one I just put on there to turn the power supply on and off, on and off for testing. So I'm just going to unplug this, and this needs to plug into the power switch on the case. So you can see right here that there are actually four prongs on this power switch because an actual AT power supply has four power cables coming out of it. And I had to do a sanity check because I forgot how these cables went in so I took a multimeter, tested the continuity when I uh, pressed in the power switch and basically I want to plug in my cables, sorry for blocking the view. I'm going to plug in my cables, one in the front and one in the back, on the same side. So, let me do that. These, uh, these little connections are, these connections are pretty tight. 
They're hard to get in in this tight space. There's one. Okay, there's the other. So you can't really see it, but both of those power cables are on one side of the power switch. Okay, we're almost finished. We just have to put in these front panel connectors right here. So that'll take a few minutes. I need a little more light to see the labels on this motherboard. Okay, I'm not going to worry about the turbo switch right now. Uh, we'll just get the essentials hooked up. Power LED, reset switch, hard drive LED, and PC speaker. So, reset switch first. Okay, next is going to be power LED. And I can never remember which way the cable goes. So we'll have to fix it if it's wrong. Okay, the power LED, I know it's not going to work the way it's plugged in. Uh, I'm going to have to modify the connector because because this is a uh, three pin connector and the wires are going to each each side of the connector but I need the wire going into the middle pin. So I'm going to have to fix that later. And now for the speaker. Alright, and the hard drive LED, which should be going to the I.O. controller. Okay, the hard drive LED is plugged in, and all the important front panel connections are plugged in. And all I got left is this PS2 connector in the back, which we're not going to plug in because there's no PS2 on this motherboard. And I got this uh, serial port on the back. I'm just going to plug it into my I.O. controller even though I'm not going to use it. Alright. And that should be everything. Alright, our computer is all plugged in now. So let me turn on the monitor. And... Okay, here goes nothing. All right, there we go. Okay, it says CMOS system options not set. I actually turned this on once before starting this video segment and it uh, said that the CMOS battery was dead and that's expected because there's no battery at all on the motherboard. So I have to set up all the CMOS settings. And I actually have to look on the hard drive for all these settings. So, if you give me a second, I'll do that. Okay, I got the hard drive parameters in. 1,046 cylinders, 16 heads, 63 sectors, 515 megabytes. That sounds about right. Floppy drive A is going to be our 1.44 megabyte, 3 and a quarter, I mean 3 and a half inch drive. Floppy drive B, 1.2 megabyte, 5 and a quarter. And we'll turn on daylight savings. Current time is 11.35 p.m. So it's going to be 23, 35. It's moving really slow. Okay, 11.35, the date is, it's the, let's see, it's the 24th of June, all right, 2014, okay, that's all good, advanced setup, I don't think I have to do anything here. Advanced chipset options. 
There's really no need for me to change any of this right now. So let me write to CMOS. And you might be able to, you might be able to see that my hard drive LED is staying on, so I got that plugged in wrong. I have something on this hard drive from when I tested this motherboard before. Oh, okay, so it's just a command.com, it goes straight to the command prompt. And I don't have anything on this hard drive except for Windows 98 uh, CD-ROM files, which are not even installed yet. And I think I wasn't even able to install it on this 386. But it's working. Okay, I went ahead and tested the floppy drives out, and they both seem to be working. The cable connecting the B drive is a little bit loose, but if I don't mess with it, it'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is play a few games that I have laying around, and just uh, test out the computer. Now I don't have a serial mouse, and I also don't have a sound card installed, so that kind of sucks. <laughs> but if, uh, depending on how well this video is received, I might do a part two and uh, get the sound card working, get the CD-ROM working, and maybe buy a serial mouse to do further testing on this computer. So we're just going to have to make do with just the keyboard. So the first game we're going to play is Prince of Persia, the first one. Let's see if this works. <laughs> PC speaker music. <laughs> Prince of Persia. 1990, Jordan Mechner. This was a great game. We're not going to watch the whole thing, the whole intro. Let's just load the game up, play it a little bit. That sucks. I held down shift, but I guess I wasn't close enough to the ledge. And there's health down here. But you probably already know that. Well, I'm not going to play this too much, but as you can see, it's working, and it runs fine on the 386, so let's try another game. Okay, the next game we're going to test is LHX Attack Chopper, and I already have the disc in. Alright, LHX. And I think this game only has PC speaker music and sound effects, so we don't need a sound card. Oh, that's weird. Maybe my monitor is just jacked up. It is running really choppy on the 386. Yeah, I think my monitor's just jacked up. There we go. 
so it doesn't run too great on the 386. Now if I remember correctly, there is a copy protection scheme where you have to look up a question in the manual. Uh, but you could get lucky and get simple questions like this. It says, how many are in the crew of the ZSU-32 gun system? Uh, one, two, three. Really? It wasn't one, two, or three. I should have thought that thought about that a little bit deeper. Uh, my monitor's still jacked up. Let's try that again. Hmm. What is the weapon range in meters of the AGM-114A Hellfire? That's a good question. I'm just going to look that up online, so give me a moment. Okay, I looked it up on the actual LHX website, and it says 7,000 meters. Yeah, that worked. Okay, we're just going to do a simple mission really quick. Increase throw. Yeah, it's a bit choppy. Okay, I'm gonna crash. And we're dead. Okay, well that's it for the LHX test. Okay, for the last game test, we're gonna play a classic. Lemmings. And I still have the original box, original discs, original manual. Here's the inner box. Here's the manual. It's seen better days, but all the pages are there. <laughs> I used to read this thing all the time and just look at it, look the, at the little comic inside of here. <laughs> okay, so here are the original floppies. And you have a PC version and yeah, I guess it's uh, for PC, you know, IBM PC Amstrad, Amstrad Tandy. So let's try this out. VGA Lemmy. Of course this game is going to be incredibly difficult to play on a keyboard, but of course we're just going to take a look at it anyways. Uh, we'll do high performance PCs, we'll see how that works. Alright, insert disk 2 into drive. All right.
And there you have it, lemmings. We'll just do fun. Let's see how this works. That's kind of weird. You know what? I think this has something to do with the video card. And it's running really slow anyways. So what I'm going to do is uh, do the standard option, not the high performance PC option. Option one for PC compatibles or Tandy. Come on, uh, it's still jacked up. Oh, but the actual game seems to be running fine. So that's what really matters. That my screen is not centered. Right. I don't remember how to control the cursor on the keyboard. There we go. Come on, what's left and right? There we go. Okay, this uh, level is super easy, of course. There's pretty much no way you can mess it up. So switch to digger. And dig, and that's pretty much all you have to do. I'm going to zoom in on the screen so you can get a better look. Alright, we've got a big cluster of them. going to enter the tunnel there. Alright. Let's try level 2 really quick. Okay, I'm going to pick floater. I'm going to make him come out faster. There's only 10 lemmings on this level anyways. But that's all there is to it. Alright, I only needed 10% anyways. Okay, I think that's it for this game. Okay, there you go. A working 386DX 40MHz computer inside of a case. You don't see uh, many of those being built these days. I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's enough positive feedback, like I said before, I'll uh, maybe install a sound card get the CD-ROM working, and maybe buy the serial mouse. But uh, that's it for now, and thanks for watching.